it's amazing what people endured and for many music was their way to survive. Throughout history, violins have been seen as a symbol of Jewish faith and culture. During the Holocaust, the ability to play music was often a ticket that bought people more time. By restoring these violins, the memories of their original players live on, and so do their stories. My name is Suzanne Reto. I'm the chairman of Violins of Hope Los Angeles County. I was six days old and all kinds of commotion at the hospital and nobody knew what was happening. And finally, at the end of the day, my mother was able to corner a nurse who said, yes, the Nazis invaded Hungary this morning. And as if that's not bad enough, they established their headquarters on the grounds of the hospital. What does a mother of a six-day-old baby think? Will we ever get out of there? And if we do, how? As if an angel from heaven walked in, her doctor came, told her, I know your circumstances, and I ordered an ambulance to take you home, and I also ordered a sign for it, infectious disease. Nobody wanted to be near anyone with an infectious disease, so we kind of went home in the ambulance without any interruption. And um, life under very abnormal conditions began. As you can imagine, nobody really knew what war was and communication was not the same as it is today. So even though people had rumblings and they knew things were going on in Europe, nobody really knew what it was. When people were taken to the camps, they went through a selection process. One line was for the workers who were able-bodied, strong, and the Nazis were huge music lovers. And if you were a decent player, you were protected. And the protection came in many different ways. And the most important part was they were given more food. The other group that were frail, children, not able to work, they were marched to the gas chamber, accompanied by music. For many, music was their way to survive. And for others, if it wasn't a matter of survival, it was at least a prolonging of life. One of the most beautiful violins in the collection, it was one of the klezmer instruments, and the difference between others and this, this has the beautiful inlay work of Mother of Pearl, uh, on the front as well as the back. And to show you both, this one on the right is Mother of Pearl and the other is Little Mother of Pearl but wood inlay. And this probably has the story of a family. This one probably more of a well-to-do family. This is somewhat lesser. A friend brought the program to me and she said, would you want to do it? I said, what is it about? So I immediately went on the internet and it just seemed like the greatest opportunity because what better way to teach youngsters history, which can be very dry and not interesting, but through music. And I thought it was the thing that I really was waiting for. I contacted the Violins of Hope people, a father and son, and um, really within a few days, we were all agreed to be doing it in Los Angeles. It's a three-pronged program. Education, which to me is the foremost. The concerts, which is the more cultural part. And then an exhibit, which we had at the Los Angeles Holocaust Museum. One day, one man came in and said to Amnon, I need you to buy this violin. I don't want to play on it. So he said, you know, you see 400 violins around me. I have no more room. I don't." have any opportunity to have any more. And he said, well, if you're not taking it, I'm burning it. Well, this is all he needed to hear. And he says, oh no, you can't do that. And just, I'll take it and whatever. So many of the violins had lots of interesting stories that were brought to him. The education part was most important because that's the aim of the program, is to teach the next generation. If we can make them understand that these instruments represent a silenced era, but an era of great vibrancy. And anytime the restored instruments are being played, 
they almost carry on the spirit of the prior lives.